Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ryan Retro channel. Today we're going to jump into some Windows games on the Retroid Pocket 5. This is a video I've been very excited for for a long time time. And just before we jump into the video today, I'd like to say that unfortunately I've lost monetization on this channel for now. So I'm not going to be making any money for the next month or so. So if you would like to help me out, please check out the Patreon link in the description where you can unlock special Discord roles and chats, exclusive live streams for supporters where we can play some games together, and I will help you with any of your Retro Pocket 5 needs live on the live stream. And I'll also give personal thank yous to all of the supporters at the end of each video. So please Please check that out in the description if you would like to support my channel and community spreadsheets. Thank you very much, and now let's jump into this video about Windows. So we're going to be running through some Windows games today, and I'm going to completely rip off the concept of Will and E's good bin, bad bin segments. But as this is the Retroid Pocket 5, we're going to be looking at the good pocket and the bad pocket. So as we go through these 10 games today, we're going to see how well they run, and the games that run well will be going into the good pocket, and the games that don't run well will be going into the bad pocket. So let's see how these games run, starting with the first game today, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. And for all of today's tests, we have all of this information at the top where you can see the frames per second and this graph showing how the Retro Pocket 5 is dealing with this. I'm also going to change it into high performance mode just so we can get the most performance out of this. And I have enabled four gigabytes of swap memory in the settings. So let's jump onto the bike here. We seem to be getting around 25 frames per second. That's now dipping to around between 11 and 16 as we get into the main street. Today's video is a preliminary look at Winlater, so I haven't changed too many settings. Today is really the first video of Winlater tests, and I will be expanding upon this more in the next week, testing out different options within Winlater, trying to really get these games running the best they can. But today is more about just installing a game, jumping into it, and seeing how well it runs. I'm only making changes to the in-game settings, turning down resolution and settings where I can, and in the container settings, I'm only lowering resolution. There are many more things you can do in Winlater. It's a very deep and in-depth emulator, so we can go into far more detail in future videos, but today is about just getting these games up and running and seeing how they run out of the box. So you can see here I've enabled 720p, and as we are struggling with frames a little bit, let's turn the visual effects quality down to low and see if that helps out or not. And let's also enable widescreen, which I'm hoping might fix this kind of distorted ra aspect ratio. Interestingly, we seem to have lost frames, which I think has resulted from changing to widescreen. So let's turn off widescreen. Let's also bring the draw distance all the way down, turn off the frame limiter, and let's even turn the resolution down to 800 by 600. This is one I have been using in quite a few games just to get some more frames. Of course, now we have the game in a little screen over here, but this can easily be fixed by updating the settings of the container or the shortcut. But as you'll see, we're still not getting a very good frame rate. So this game is going to need some more tweaking in the future. But as for now, it's going into the bad pocket. Next up, we have Hades, a game I've only played for video testing purposes, but one that ran pretty well on the secret console. And I'm really interested to see how it runs on PC emulation, because I think it's quite an easy game to run. So let's jump into the game. You'll see the frame rate at the top left of the screen right now is well over 100 frames per second. This feels extremely smooth and also looks incredible on the OLED screen. Of all the games I've played so far, this is definitely one of the best looking games. Just please excuse my noobishness because I haven't ever played this game except for testing purposes. So I don't really know what I'm doing and I'm basically just smashing buttons, but I'm having a good time doing it. Looking at the frame rate at the top left, it really isn't going even below 120 frames per second. So I think this is a great example to really show the potential of Winlater on the Retroid Pocket 5. This is beautiful. Once again, in a new area, we're still getting well above 100 frames per second. This is one that I really want to test on the Odin 2 portal when it comes in, because of course we have that 120 hertz display on there. This video you're watching right now is being recorded at 4K 60 frames per second, so I'm hoping you really get to see the smoothness in the gameplay here over a lot of videos on YouTube that are being uploaded at 30 frames per second. So it seems very clear that Hades is absolutely beautiful on this Retroid Pocket 5's OLED screen through Winlater and is absolutely definitely going into the good pocket. Our next game is Need for Speed Most Wanted. You can see this is running at a lower resolution. I've put it in this 800 by 600 boxed frame just to try and get some more frames out of it. So let's see how well we do. So here we are inside the game 
And the frames per second looks very good. If you look at the frames per second we're working with here, we have around 50. But interestingly, it doesn't feel nearly that smooth. I have lowered the settings quite a lot. You can see we're running in a little square right now. And it does run pretty well, but it doesn't feel very smooth, which is probably to do with that minimum frame rate you can see here of only 8.8. .8. And if you keep your eyes peeled on the frames per second counter up here, you will see it stays pretty decent but it just doesn't feel particularly smooth. Without a doubt, the game is playable. That is unquestionable. You can play this game for sure, but I think with a little bit more tinkering and working around with the settings, we can get it even more playable. So it's in quite a gray spot right now in terms of pockets, but if you look at the frame rate, it's constantly dropping down and it doesn't feel very fluid, even though the frame rate looks quite good. So unfortunately for now, this is going in the bad pocket. Next up, we have Hollow Knight. I'm excited for this one because it's a game that runs pretty easily in most cases. I tested it before on the secret console and it ran so well at 720p that I ended up boosting it up to 1080p where it still ran great and looked incredible. So let's jump into the game here, see what kind of frame rate we can get. And once again, we're running this at 720p. So we will think about boosting that resolution up. Jumping into the world, we have around 54 frames per second. So right away, it doesn't seem like a great candidate to be boosting up the resolution like I expected. We're in the low 50s here and we'll see how that changes as we progress through this level a little bit. And it seems to be staying very consistent in the low to mid 50s. Hopefully with this video being 60 frames per second, you're going to be able to see the smoothness of the game pretty well. And it feels very smooth to me. I don't usually find much of a difference between 50 and 60 frames per second. Maybe that's because I'm from the UK and I'm used to 50 frames per second being the norm. But to me, anything above 50 frames per second is nice and smooth. And this is a lovely experience. So this is definitely going into the good pocket. This is Call of Duty World at War. I've tried to set up the controller here myself and it's not exactly working very well, but hopefully it's just good enough that you can see the performance. One issue is that it's very hard to look down the sight of the gun, but I will try my best. And I found that while I did set up the right stick to control the gun, I actually prefer just using the screen because it's far more accurate. So I will be using the screen instead of the right stick in this game because I just find it a little bit more comfortable. You can see the frames per second is around the 30s and 40s. It's definitely not too bad at all. Once again, it is quite hard to get the controls working. Oh, there we go. I couldn't get native control support, so I had to try to set it up myself and it is far from perfect. For anyone who played World at War back in the day when it was out, I absolutely loved the multiplayer. It was still to this date my favorite Call of Duty multiplayer game. So I wish there was a way to get multiplayer working on here. And if there is, I would love that. But for now we have the single player campaign. It's working pretty well. We do for sure have a pretty playable game here. So if you'd like to play Call of Duty World at War, it is playable for sure. And I am putting this in the good pocket. Next up we have Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. I was a really big fan of Dragon Ball Z growing up, so I'm excited to play another Dragon Ball Z game. We're playing this at 720p with everything turned off and the internal rendering resolution set down to 70%. These animated cartoony games always look fantastic on OLED screens like we have here on the Retro Pocket 5. So this game just looks absolutely beautiful. Boom! Oh, it looks incredible. Interestingly, compared to Need for Speed, this feels extremely fluid. We once again, as you can see, have an average frame rate in the 30s, sometimes in the 40s, but it just looks amazing. The minimum frame rate is only 17, and it seems to be very solidly in the 30s and 40s. So I think this is a very, very playable experience. This game is very, very playable, looks fantastic, and feels really smooth. This game absolutely 100% is going in the good pocket. Next up, we have a beautiful game that I'm really enjoying these days, Stardew Valley. This is running with the Virgil driver instead of Turnip because I couldn't get it to load using Turnip. I also seem to have forgotten to turn on the display here, so apologies for that. I'll just turn on the Retroid Pocket 5's floating icon so you can get a rough idea up here of the frames per second. But as you can see, it's running pretty smoothly and I'm very curious about if we can get mods working with this. So that is something I'm going to explore over the next week or so as I delve deeper into WinLater and Windows emulation on the Retroid Pocket 5. But as I'm walking around doing my basic farmer jobs, you'll see it's running nice and smoothly and it looks fantastic. 
So Stardew Valley, definitely playable here, with the occasional hiccup here and there whenever you do something for the first time, which is probably a shader caching issue. So for example, when I just put a seed down for the very first time in this save, it skipped a beat for a second, but then it's right back up to 60 frames per second, looking smooth and lovely. So I wouldn't expect there to be any issues playing this on the Retro Pocket 5 with Win later, and I'm of course going to put Stardew Valley into the good pocket. Our next game is Yu-Gi-Oh! Power of Chaos Kaiba the Revenge. This game was part of a trilogy with Yugi, Kaiba and Joey from the Yu-Gi-Oh! series, all available to duel against. And they all had their own decks which represented the ones in the series. It was really fun, nice and cheap, and very easy to run. This game is completely mouse only. It doesn't use gamepads, it doesn't use keyboards. All you have is this little cursor in the middle of the screen. And I have made a custom control profile to use the right stick and trigger in order to use the cursor. But honestly, it's much easier to just use your finger. So as I've been testing this, I've basically been using the screen as a trackpad with my thumb and then clicking with the right trigger. So I can just simply grab a card like this and play it onto the field, then move over here to end my turn. Like all of the Yu-Gi-Oh! games of this period, there's really nice voice acting and even some animated sequences to make you feel more like you're actually in the anime itself. So if I play this Change of Heart card to steal his monster, let's see what he says. Chain! Chain! Well, that shut me down. Let's attack now. And I remember when I used to play this game back in the day, I really liked the way the little sword follows the cursor around. It's such a small, insignificant feature but it just made the whole game feel more fluid. So you get the idea with this game, you carry on, you play the duel, the frames per second is gonna be absolutely locked at 30. This is definitely a 30 frames per second kind of game and you will have no issues playing this at all. Also, we're running it in a square because that's how the game was. It never had a widescreen mode as far as I'm aware. So this game is actually running perfectly. So of course this game is going in the good pocket. The next game on the list is Traveler's Rest, a really cute game, a little bit like Stardew Valley, but where you run a bar. I've been trying this out the past few days and the frame rate is abysmal, around five to 10 frames per second, but I still wanted to show you it anyway. But unfortunately now, it doesn't even open. I've tried a few different shortcuts, a few different containers, and I just cannot get it running right now. So unfortunately for now, Traveler's Rest has to go in the bad pocket. This is Skyrim, a game that needs no introduction. I've been testing this out since yesterday, and compared to the secret console version, it feels smoother, it looks better, everything about it seems really nice. But the problem is, it crashes after about 30 seconds. So that's something we definitely need to fix. And I cannot find out which button accesses my inventory. And usually while poking around with the buttons, I end up crashing the game. We can crouch, we can go into third person mode, we can swing our fists. Everything's fluid. We're getting a pretty solid 60 frames per second. It looks lovely, but I just cannot figure out how to access my inventory. Oh, there it is, the A button. So let's see if we can grab an item and let's see if we can get a little bit further this time without crashing. I am noticing the frame rate now dipping to 40. Nice shot, Ryan. Nice shot again. Run! Get him, Hadvar! The frame rate has dropped a little bit. The fan in the Retroid Pocket 5 is spinning up, but overall, this is really nice frame rate. Let's switch over to a lovely great sword, and I'm also going to increase the brightness quite a lot. Leroy! Ah! The Leroy Jenkins approach was too strong for win later on this occasion. So Skyrim is clearly running really, really well. It looks great and it's fluid. But as you just saw, it's routinely crashing. So unfortunately, for now, I'm going to have to put Skyrim in the bad pocket. But this is something that has a lot of potential to be great if I can just fix those crashes. So those were 10 Windows games put into the good pocket and the bad pocket on the Retroid Pocket 5. I hope this video was fun, entertaining, and helpful for you. If it was, please give me a like and subscribe if you didn't already. If you'd like to buy your own Retroid Pocket 5, check out the official Retroid affiliate link in the description. And once again, please consider signing up to one of my Patreon packages as that would really help me out over the next month or so when I'm not making any money. I will be so grateful to anybody who does so, and I will put the names of those who did in my next video tomorrow. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again tomorrow for some more Windows game testing. And tomorrow is also going to be very exciting. So watch out for that. Thank you again for watching and bye.